Good day, Indiana. Welcome back to another week of IUP TV News, broadcast from Davis Hall. My name is Aiden Shaw. And my name is Kayla Ensko. Today we bring you stories that are relevant to IUP and the Indiana community. We'll begin with local news. Newsweek Magazine announced its ranking of the top 5,000 STEM high schools for 2019, honoring excellence in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Indiana Area High School came in at number 2,856. The purpose was to determine which primary, secondary institutions in America best offer students experiences in STEM while preparing them for post-secondary outcomes. After two years of declining drug overdose deaths, officials in Indiana County have seen a startling spike this year, but the reason is hard to pin down. Overdose deaths, mainly from heroin and fentanyl, peaked in at 53 in Indiana County in 2016 before falling significantly in the last two years. But through October of this year, 31 people have died from drug overdoses, with more pending toxicology tests, up from 23 in all of 2018. If you use Instagram on a daily basis, you will soon see a new change on the app. Instagram announced that it will be hiding likes from users in the United States. A limited number of accounts will begin to see the change this week. Instagram stated that it's about young people, to help to pressurize Instagram, to make it less of a competition, and give people the idea to focus on connecting with people that they love and things that inspire them. The Arctic weather has become stronger, bringing in a record low temperatures and early snow and ice to parts of the country and causing schools to close and flights to be canceled. The cold temperatures have spread from the East Coast and early season snow has fallen in Chicago, Tennessee, and northern New York. The Arctic weather is expected to continue before tapering off later in the week. Okay. Australia faces catastrophic fire danger. The Australia government declared for a state of emergency, the first after six years. The condition especially hits three areas in New South Wales, including the Greater Sydney area, New South Wales, the country's most popular state. Residents were warned that homes cannot withstand this level of fires and that leaving early is the only way to survive. The emergency declaration is in effect for a week and covers the entire state. Thousands of Buddhist monks from all over the world made a pilgrimage this fall to the monastery high in India's Himalayas to pray for the Dalai Lama's longevity. Dalai Lama is currently 84 years old and lives in his exile in northern India. He's the 14th Tibetan Buddhism traditional high priest. The Tibetan Buddhists believe their spiritual leader has been ill and will be reincarnated when he dies. Traditionally, the Dalai Lama himself gives instructions before he dies. However, the Chinese government claims the right to his name successor since the Dalai Lama and his followers fled the country. The situation might result in two Dalai Lamas, one identified by the Chinese government and another by Tibetans in exile. All your professors, all of them. They know that all it takes is one dreamer with passion, one person, and they hope in each of you that you might be that one who makes a longer lasting light bulb, who writes music for the ages, who reaches into the mind and discovers a new star and who can change the world of a fifth grader. We're gathered here to hope in you. weather started to change from cold to cold, we wanted to remind you about new changes around Indiana that might affect bikers who bike across campus. Our reporter, Caitlin Dotts, has her story. IUP's campus has gotten a lot greener over the last few weeks, and I'm not talking about the trees. I'm talking about those big green bike lanes that have been painted all around campus, extending from the Hootlebug Trail to the Church Street Light Station. The bike station offers a place to park, as well as tools and instructions you may need to repair your bike if you have a flat tire or a broken chain. I think they're great. I think they uh, clearly delineate where uh, the route is to go from the end of the Hootabug to here to downtown. And also, um, I'm totally not an unbiased opinion because I'm on the borough council that gave the go-ahead to put the project in, so I really like the project because I voted for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So yeah, I think it's great. <laughs> it's now it's now here. It's been a long time. We've been talking about getting a route in for like six or seven years. And so now it's here. So that's what I like about it most, is that it's here. But not everyone is a fan of the new bike lanes. Uh, so what do I think of like the green bike tracks? Um, I'm not a fan. I think that they unnecessarily just closed a bunch of roads to do road work for the sake of inconveniencing drivers, which is really what I feel they do all the time. Uh, there's still one of the roads closed over up here on campus that I can't drive around on. Uh, it's pretty upsetting. Honestly, I mean, I like bikers. Uh, if they want to share the roads with us, I, I'm okay with that. I'm all for it. But I think that they should extend that same courtesy to us. Uh, they should really follow the rules of the road they drive. They ride on the sidewalks anyways, which in a big city you can't do, understandably. But at the same time, you know, use some common sense here. If I'm driving and you're in the middle of the road, please just let me pass you. Please don't drive in the middle of the road. Don't ride your bike. In the middle of the, like, like, this isn't a music video for Queen, all right? Drivers and cyclists will just have to get used to sharing the roads. This has been Katie Dots reporting live for IUP TV News. Cold weather might affect moods and motivation, which can affect schools or day-to-day -day activities. Reporter Ian Cezesco describes how it affects students and how to cope with it. Colder months, it brings shorter, darker days to Pennsylvania, and it feels as if depression affects people now more than ever. The CDC reports that youth depression rates have been rising for the past decade, moving from 5.4% in 2003 to 8.4% in 2012. Luke Miller is one such student grappling with depression. He's been a regional planning student here at IUP for the past three years. I first started noticing my depression in my first semester of college right out of high school. Um, my sleep schedule got real messed up. At one point I was basically nocturnal. Um, I was reclusive, not going to class, not having motivation to do much of anything. I tried seeing a therapist on campus, but my motivation was so low that I missed my appointments. Colleges have placed increased focus in mental health awareness, but Luke believes that their efforts may not be enough. I do not think that students have good access to mental health services on campus because of my experiences with the Center for Applied Psychology. Not for lack of trying on part of the staff, but I believe that they're somewhat unqualified and that makes for lesser quality of care. Alleviating depression is certainly not a one-size-fits-all situation, and for Luke, he looked to the internet for help. I currently treat my depression by seeing a therapist and a psychiatrist for psychiatric medication, both virtually with web chat, it's very convenient. They're located in my hometown, and I don't have to drive all the way back there for appointments. Marissa Wilson is a community assistant with IEP's Whitmire Hall. One of her responsibilities is to watch over her residents' mental health states. We kind of just act as a general, like, peer mentor. Um, it's very strongly told to us that we are not counselors, um, although obviously we want to be there for you to feel, for our residents to feel comfortable talking to us, and I'm always 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 trying to make time and make people feel comfortable coming to me so mostly in like the role as an RA our our job our duties are connect the resident or the student to the resources that they need so usually it's the counseling center and then you can know we tell them there's the counseling center down um, across from folders there's also the counseling center in um, Euler you know there's open door which is um, a really good organization that does a whole bunch of things and you know so there's a bunch of different resources on campus and off campus within the community. RAs like Marissa undergo sensitivity training to teach her how to handle delicate situations that may arise when dealing with her residents. One of the ones that's like most universal for um, RAs in collegiate schools is a training called Behind Closed Doors. Um, which is specifically training you for various situations that you would have when you come into someone's space. And it's, they're usually um, like sensitive topics. So there's a suicidal ideation um, training during, during those rotations of trainings. Resident assistants such as Marissa feel that many students struggle with the adjustments that come with the transition into college. Many students are experiencing what Luke has gone through in the past. 
And if you know someone who is suffering from depression, overwhelming anxiety, or other concerning issues, please contact Resident Assistant, the IUP Health Center, or any other local therapist. This is Ian Shasko with IUP TV News, signing off. On sports news, last week IUP faced off against Edinburgh University for the last home game of the season. What started out as a slow game turned into IUP beating Edinburgh 35-6. Elliot Hicks has the story. The IUP Crimson Hawks football team celebrated Senior Day and Veterans Day Saturday, matching up against the Edinburgh Fighting Scots. The first quarter featured no points, but a pair of interceptions, one by each team, including one by IUP's Harrison Dreyer. Edinburgh put the first points on the board with a field goal, but the powerful Crimson Hawks offense would not be silenced. Quentin Maxwell threw his first touchdown pass of the day to Dom McNeil, which gave IUP a lead it would not relinquish. Once again, this time he looks to the other side. Dom McNeil is going to catch the touchdown pass. A nice little route there. There is the cannon fire for the first time on senior day. Dwayne Brown kept his touchdown streak alive, scoring from the Wildcat, and IUP took a 14-3 lead into the locker room. And on the first play of the second half, Nazir Streeter came up big for IUP. He's looking for Gregory, and that is going to be picked off, I believe, by Nazir Streeter. Edinburgh would put up another field goal, but that's all the points they would get. JoJo Gauze scored a pair of second-half touchdowns with another interception by Streeter in between. Did hang around the official after the play. That's Becker, and that's another interception from Nazir Streeter. Who else, Elliot? Who else but Nazir Streeter? And Justice Evans' one-yard TD run closed the scoring on a victorious senior day for IUP as they earned a 35-6 victory. For IUP TV Sports, I'm Elliot Hicks. IUP remains number four in the Super Region 1 ranking after last week's victory against Edinburgh. If all goes well next week, IUP could be hosting a playoff game right here on campus. Tristan Borland has the story. With the regular season coming to a close, the Crimson Hawks currently have a seat in the postseason. Other teams with postseason aspirations are Kutztown, Slippery Rock, Shepherd, Urbana, Westchester, and West Virginia State. Kutztown and Slippery Rock will duel it out for a first round bye in the playoffs, and IUP will host Shepherd for the first round of the playoffs. This will be the third time that Miller Stadium will host a playoff game this decade, and IUP's playoff record while at home in the playoffs is 5-2. and two. This will hopefully swing momentum into IUP's favor because IUP has never defeated Shepard. Ever since their first meeting in 1998, IUP has been defeated by Shepard three separate times. IUP has gone undefeated at Miller Stadium this season, so it will be a battle of the narratives. Will the Crimson Hawks continue to dominate at home, or will Shepard continue to dominate the Crimson Hawks no matter the circumstances? Make sure to watch this matchup because you're not going to want to miss it. Junior defensive back Nazir Streeter was named our IUP player of the game after making two interceptions against Edinburgh. Mackenzie Auker has the story. This past weekend, IUP played Edinburgh. IUP Athletics honored all military, veterans, and first responders in honor of Veterans Day. It was also senior day as IUP honored its 20 seniors prior to kickoff. It was a cold one at Miller Stadium, but that didn't stop the Crimson Hawks as they won the game 35 to six and improved to nine and one. IUP is currently number four in the PSAC West standings. Their next game is at Shippensburg and they're looking to add another win to improve to 10 and one in hopes of hosting a playoff game. I had the opportunity to interview junior defensive back Nazir Streeter, who was our player of the game. I'm here with junior defensive back Nazir Streeter, who was our player of the game. Your last regular season game is against Shippensburg, and you had such an incredible season. <laughs> How are you going to keep the momentum going for the next game? Um, every every week is one and no, so we're going to just keep working hard in practice and just, just keep trying to win. You had two incredible interceptions and great coverage. Is this the highlight of your season? Nah, we, we definitely have more coming. We definitely have more coming. Congratulations on the win and good luck on the remainder of your season. Thank you, thank you. This has been Mackenzie Auker reporting for IUP TV Sport. As a new spring semester is approaching, students look for a variety of classes to register. One that adds curiosity is virtual reality. John Berkey has a story. Imagine a world where technology can be used to simulate real-life surgery for a student to practice on. 
IUP is taking a step to study this technology next semester with two new classes relating to virtual reality, being one of the first state schools in PA to do so. The two new classes will be instructed by Mr. Rami Shaban, an IUP faculty, staff, and former medical doctor. Uh, so I came here to IOP and I studied my master's here and I continued my PhD in Communications, Media, and Instructional Technology. And um, I got hired here as adjunct faculty to teach game design and interactive media. VR has endless opportunities, whether that be related to education or specific fields that require precise testing before the skills are applied to the real world. Uh, we build some applications, simulation-based application of surgeries, we built some applications of, uh, of for example, microscopes. So uh, uh, students, medical students, start uh, uh, learning how to, uh, to see the specimens under the microscope. So we created virtual mi microscopy. Virtual reality also gives the opportunity for students to have a more fun and interactive way to learn through games just inside their headset. Uh, we had a main goal that uh, we need to improve uh, students' learning experience in medicine, especially with tough materials in medicine. All of the materials are textbooks, um, heavy of knowledge, but uh, without any uh, uh, funny learning experience or interactivity. So started, we started created um, interactive uh, applications for students. Students taking these classes will also have the opportunity to make some of this fun and interactive media themselves. In class we teach students how to produce uh, video, VR videos, um, of course using 360 camera and 3D camera, um, I will show it to you. And uh, also on the second part of the class we are going to create interactive media. The massive downside to this program is the sheer cost of the devices at play. IUP got two grants totaling $9,000, and yet there are only six devices that will be used for this class. There is, however, a cheap solution. And also we will ask students to uh, purchase something very primitive that uh, they can just visualize what they are going to do. This one is just a, a holder for the phone. Yep. Okay, you put the phone inside, and you start, a conver it converts the phone screen into a VR uh, headset. IUP's VR program and VR itself still has a long way to go till we see the full potential of what the technology can do for education. My name is Jonathan Berkey, reporting for IUP TV. People want to look good. With a new hair salon that opened in Indiana, everyone, no matter their hair type, can get the style they've been looking for with the help of a professional stylist. Our reporter, Taylor Jones, has her story. So how you been? I've been good. Just getting through the semester. All right, is it going? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, my grades are good. Good. Looking good is necessary for a lot of people. However, finding the right hair salon who understands your hair might be challenging. It's really important, um, especially as a black woman, to find a salon here in town that could do my hair and that they're able to do so many hairstyles, especially at an affordable rate. As a college student, we, I'm on a budget, so those factors were really important to me. I like getting my hair braided, so finding a hairdresser that could do that was really important as well and someone who could straighten my hair, curl it, any hairstyle I wanted, really. Located on 20 S 7th Street in Indiana, PA, Quintina Thomas opened this location a year ago for people to come get their hair done and walk out feeling like a brand new person. I opened up this hair salon because for many years there was uh, an issue um, here in Indiana and in the county with minorities unable to get their hair done. Um, and so there has been uh, this issue for many years and people, temporary people have came and went um, where rather there was a student or someone that lived in a neighborhood that was providing services but they were not permanent. Um, so we needed a permanent place for minorities to come and get their hair done because it has affected me as a student when I came up here. It has affected interracial families living here and biracial families, foster and adoptive families that I have met along the way. The salon offers many styles and services for clients to choose from. From wash and sets, scalp treatments, box braids, waxing, and more, serving all ages from children to adults.
The meaning behind hair for everyone salon is literally what it states. Um, this is a salon for everyone. Everyone can come here and get their hair done, no matter what race or background you're from, because the stylists, including myself, are trained to provide hair services for every type of hair. Before Quintina was a salon owner and stylist, she was originally a family therapist for several years and also did nonprofit management. Being a stylist wasn't my original career choice. When I decided to open up Hair for Everyone Salon, a lot of my friends and loved ones encouraged me to go back to school to get licensed. And so I would not only be the business owner, but also be a stylist where I can jump in and help if I needed to. And so it has been rewarding around a, along the way. It has been rewarding along the way because I have always know how to do hair. I did my sister's hair, I have done my hair. And so it's just a matter of a smart career choice. Starting a new business is not an easy task. Quintina has faced challenges along her journey into building this salon. And the challenges I face when starting this business is always the big one, which is funding. Um, you need a lot of money to start a business. So I looked into different funding options, um, including what I had <laughs> as far as personal funds. And looked at what I needed and had to itemize every single thing that I needed to open up a salon. And I will say that has been the major um, struggle and challenge. There are at least 20 hair salons around Indiana. Competition is high. However, since the shop was opened a year ago, it has tapped different types of clients who come from different ethnicities with different hair textures. It's important to me because I want someone to trust who will be able to decide a hairstyle for me if I'm unsure. Another important element of the salon is that it allows the clients to embrace their different hair textures and makes it feel like a second home. By embracing differences, Hair for Everyone Salon hopes to help people look their best at the same time educating the people to embrace diversity. This is Taylor Jones reporting to you from IUP TV News, Indiana, PA. I fell in love with the campus, with the people, with my IUP life. See it for yourself. Visit us. Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Find your success. This is IUP TV News. Indiana is a place where university members live side by side with the community. In order to help create a supportive environment, the IUP TV and Student Photography Associations is holding a food drive to help students in need. All food can be dropped off at the Davis B1B and Stouffer 121. Non-perishable and monetary donations is also accepted. The Theater of Lively Arts is hosting a play called Stargazer, a dance and music show that takes you on a journey through space. The show will be on November 15th to the 17th in Zinc Hall. Tickets will be available online or at the door. Kip Gallery in Sprouse Hall is displaying a new exhibit of artist Scott Turry. The exhibition will show paintings from what he called the longing ritual from walking through Pittsburgh's Frick Park, the Homewood Cemetery, or the neighborhoods of Squirrel Hill. The work is on display from November 12th to December 13th. Next week, we'll run a few stories related to Thanksgiving. That's all the time that we have for this week's broadcast. Be sure to check in with us next week for all new stories. Reporting for IUP-TV, my name is Kayla Ensko. And my name is Aiden Shaw. We'll see you next week, Indiana.